our God is a God of vision and a God of plan. So, before God creates anything, even from Genesis 1 1, he said, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So, God already had a plan of how the earth should be. God already had a plan on what he will create on the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. And he knew that on the seventh day he will rest. And to show you how accurate God is in his plan, he made man after he has created everything. So man did not come into this world to start saying, oh, there's still water, there's nowhere for me to put my foot. Before the tree came, there was a dry ground. Before the animals came, they were dry ground, there were food for them to feed on. And before you were created, there was already an assignment for us. There was already food for us. There's already a place for us to stay. One prayer you pray for yourself is that God should give you vision. In Acts 26, 19, Paul said, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. O oh, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. So our topic today is heavenly vision. Very good. Heavenly vision. The reason why I'm led to teach about this vision now because of where the church is going to now, where God is ushering the church into. If you read the book of Daniel, see Daniel said he had a vision. Daniel spoke saying, I saw in my vision by night. Behold, the four winds of the heaven we are stirring up the great sea. The word great sea, he writes, please follow what I'm going to teach you today. That word great sea means the nations of the earth. We instead the nations of the earth. Next verse. And four great beasts came from the sea, each different from others. The four great beasts are human beings that we reign. There are four kings, four empires that we come. The first was like a lion and he had eagle's wing. I watched his wing were plucked off and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand on two feet like a man. And a man's heart was given to it. A man's heart was given to a beast, a lion. So when you see some people who are wicked and killing, they are not acting on their own accord. In the realm of the spirit, it was planned. Even Hitler killing a lot of Jewish people. They are part of this vision. Some human beings are not just mere human. They are beasts with human hearts. So the human heart is what makes them to live among men. But they are, they are beasts. They are fallen beasts. So this first lion was talking about the Babylonian Empire, and he's speaking about Nebuchadnezzar. What did Daniel saw? Vision. Daniel spoke saying, I saw in my vision by night. Vision are God's thoughts with picture and voice. And when you are seeing it, it comes with picture, it comes with voice. Visions are God's image imprinted in man's thoughts. God printing his image or what he's about to do in your thoughts. And vision is God's plan that he puts in man's imagination. The absence of vision will bring diminishing. You lose what you don't have vision about. Let's assume you start a business and you don't know the next step you are here in this business. 
You don't know the next step to take for the business to go to the next level. You will remain stagnant to the market. Vision is what makes you to grow from where you are to other places, to spread. You only spread when there's vision. Many people are afraid in business. That's why you need a listing, listing. You say, oh God, hear me, oh God, hear me. God does not hear noise. You don't making voices noise. You should ask God for a vision. Every business without vision will diminish. Every family without a vision will diminish. And what proof to you that you lack vision is satisfaction. When you feel satisfied in where you are, you lack vision. Because the truth is that vision provoke hunger. So if the enemy want to attack you, they attack the hunger. They, they attack your vision. You can see when you discover disputes, confusion, persecution, stagnation is the absence of vision. Not really the devil. The devil operates where there's no vision. Our God is a God of vision. He spoke by the mouth of the prophet Joel that on the last day I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And Peter interpreted it again in the book of Acts of the Apostle 2 from verse 17. He said the reason why God sent forth his spirit is that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. My sons and daughters will prophesy. The young men will dream dream and old men will... Uh, is that it? Okay, old men will dream dream and young men will see vision. So when he's speaking about young men, he's talking about your prime. You will always be at your prime when you have vision. In every, in every destiny and every career, there is your prime stage. That's why a 60-year-old person can, no matter how you train to be a professional footballer, you can never operate in the realm of those in their 20s. You begin to enter your prime from 20s. When you get to your 27, 28, 30, you are dropping. Your prime will be dropping. So at the certain stage of your business, you can, and, and being your prime in your business or in your spiritual life, it's not about age and time. It's if you can still assess vision, then you are in your prime. All young people are living like old people. They don't know where to go. They don't know where to come. Because they, are, they lack vision. No vision again. You begin to live like an old man. You know, one thing you used to know an old man is that their eyes are dim. The Bible says in the book of First Samuel 3 from verse 1, the Bible says, and the eyes of Eli was dim. There was no vision. Now, the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread of revelation. And it came to pass at that time why Eli was lying down in his place. And when his eye began to grow dim, that he could not see. So when God saw that Eli's eyes have grown dim, he went to look for Samuel. Although Samuel was a child, but according to heaven, he was a young man. He could assess vision. The Lord appeared to Samuel. I am praying for you that I've been living like Eli. And it looks as if everything is going dim. Your career is going dim. A vision that will change your life is coming for you today. And you will speak like Paul and say, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. Say, I was not. the little spies of let's go for a trip let's take a day out let's go out without the children let's go and understand ourselves let's go together to the mountain these little spies when you ignore it in your marriage the marriage will diminish what is fighting man is lack of vision you can't have what you don't see you can't assess what you have not seen. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. So Paul said in the book of 2 Corinthians 4, from verse 3, he said, but even if our gospel is veiled, that is what the enemy does. Veiling. When you are veiled, you can't assess vision. The word of God is a vision. God is a God of vision. And Paul said, if this gospel is veiled, if people cannot assess it, it is because it is veiled to those who are perishing. The absence of vision 
is perishing, diminishing. There's nothing you are doing that when you don't have a vision, it doesn't matter the ministry God gives to you. If you lack vision, you will die a local champion. It doesn't matter the, how good you are as a player or a soccer player. If you lack vision, you will die a local champion. Yesterday, we were doing midnight prayer. And I asked everybody, what do you want God to do for you? Begin to type it on the comment section. And to my greatest bewilderment, people were saying marriage, car, job. And God shook his head through my head. I'm telling you. Nobody was asking anything that relates to the vision of God. Before you ask, ask for God to show you a vision. The Bible says, ask, it shall be given. But before you ask, ask for the vision of the Lord. for an inheritance of nations I will give them to you for an inheritance Psalm 2 verse 8 ask me and I will give you the nations for an inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession this is how God speaks are you hearing me? Yes. We, it's, it's, many people don't know why they received the Holy Spirit they think the Holy Spirit came to give you marriage he came to give you a car came to give you business, came to give you a career. He came to make you governor of nations, rulers of nations, owners of territories. Week, last week I was in the mountain and the Lord appeared to me on the last day. He said, you, the church, you are running away from the vision I have for you. All the church in the world. He said, the last day, my plan for the church is for them to be in the government. It's for them to own properties, own territories, possess cities. He said, that is why I called you king of kings, meaning be in government. Lord of lords, be a landlord. <laughs> Have you ever asked yourself, why is the church fighting themselves? Everybody's confused. No vision. Any church that has no vision, there will be quagmire in that church. There will be dispute. People will be brothers will be going to fight against brothers, sisters against sisters. The, our ministry, kingdom should fight against kingdom. Not we fighting against ourselves. Whenever we are fighting against ourselves, we have left the kingdom we are supposed to be fighting against. We left the government, we left politics. We left ownership of territories, cities and nations. And we are fighting one another. Lack of vision. No vision. No vision. The first church in the book of Acts of the Apostles says, when the disciples lack vision, Acts says from verse 1, see that. So dispute is as a cause of lack of vision where there's dispute. Now in those days, when the numbers of disciples were multiplying, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists because their widows were neglected in daily distribution. Then the twelve summoned the multitude of disciples and said, it is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Imagine the apostles that Jesus took many years to train and gave them the Holy Spirit. They started serving table. That is what happens when you lack vision. You begin to serve table. You leave what you are sent to do. You know, when a man of God begins to lack vision, you see he starts calling his member, give me money. I need this. I need help. No, you can't be a man of God with vision and beg. God forbid. You can't. You, are you hearing me? You will never beg because vision brings provision. Any Christian that is begging or a pastor that is begging is the absence of vision. If you want to get heavenly supply, pray for heavenly vision. Just as government give tenders and they bring provision for the tenders, government give you contract and they give you money for contract. That is our heavenly vision. Bring heavenly provision. You must know that God is a God that operates as a kingdom. He's a monarch. 
Are you hearing me? You are from a kingdom. And every kingdom have a vision. Every king have a plan. The plan of king is to possess more territories. That's why in those days, king go for war. God is not a president. God is a king. There's no boundary. God does not have boundary. He wants to occupy every everywhere. The glory of the Lord will feed your heads. The knowledge of the glory of the Lord we feed the whole earth as the water covers the sea. So the plan of God is to occupy every territory, possess nations. And who does God want to use? He sent us into this world to be gods like him, to take over territories, to take over cities, to take over nations. That was why the Bible said in the book of Apostle 19, Paul entered into Asia. He preached the word of God in Asia. And the Bible says, so mighty grew the word of the Lord in all the territory of Ephesus. So we were sent to invade. There's no boundary. There's no place allotted to the devil. I came as Kevele Balatame Sova. I am praying for you. You are possessing cities. You are possessing nations. You are possessing territories in the name of Jesus. See that? We don't know the vision of God. That's why we have to cry. When we go for retreat, pray to God, God begin to show us his vision. God begin to show us his plans. The apostles say, we can't be serving tables. We are supposed to be preaching the word, dispensing the word. He said, we can't leave. These twelve summoned themselves. They said, it is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. He said, therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. He said, and the same please your multitude, and they choose Stephen, a man full of faith, and, and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, Nicanor, Timon, Panamos, six, whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed and laid their hands on them, then the word of the Lord spread, and the number of disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of priests were obedient to the faith, because vision came, they produce, they multiplied. When vision comes, you begin to get men. You begin to spread. When a church begins to get vision, they begin to spread, increase and grow. When a business gets vision, it begins to train men. May you, may any veil the enemy is using to cover your vision, may that veil cast fire, cast fire, cast fire. In the name of Jesus. The numbers of disciples multiplied greatly. Vision. We have been called to dispense the word of God. We have been called to win more souls. How come we are serving food? How come? The Bible spoke about something. A mighty man of valor that was born to be a deliverer and the old Philistines were scared of him that even the day that he died the Philistines said our gods have delivered to us Samson the man that have killed many of us now Samson never knew that every day while he was roaming around the Philistines were consulting their gods they were sacrificing to their gods to get something for them. And something saw Delilah. And he saw woman. And he saw marriage. And he forgot his vision. And the Bible said the day Samson was caught. The first thing they did. After they removed his hair. They removed his two eyes. And they made him to become a grander. A deliverer became a grander. When the enemy remove your vision. They change your destination. They change your destiny. And they change your mission. They change your commission. They, everything about you become changed. I am praying for you that the enemy have blindfolded you that they have removed your eyes let your sight be restored be restored be restored be restored be restored be restored the Bible says see, Judges 16 from verse 24 he 
never knew they were consulting every day. He said, when the people saw him, they praised their God. For they said, our God has delivered into our hand our enemy, the destroyer of our land, and the one who multiplied our dead. Samson was supposed to be in the government. He was a judge in those days. Pres in Israel those days, judges were like presidents. When we forget that in the book of Isaiah 9, from verse 6, he said, for unto us a child will be born and a son will be given and the government of their territory shall be upon their shoulder. There's a government God wants to, God government wants to invade the earth. And so one of the reasons why the Holy Ghost came was to give us that mandate of the government, the vision of the government of heaven, so that we can use it to invade all our territories, all our families, all everywhere we are, we should possess the nations. Are you hearing me? Listen, if you ask God for a car, if he gives you a car, the government will take your car. If you ask God for money, the government will pound your money. If you ask God for a big church, the government can close the church. So the church has to be in government. If you ask God for breakthrough, the government can freeze your account. Because they say the best form of defense is attack. Every chicken, mother chicken, that the only thing she does is to cover our young ones. We definitely lose all of them. Because the ego does not cover his young one. He only go for attack. When he see the little chicken, his mandate is to pick them, kill them. You are not re redeemed to become chicken. Guiding breakthrough, my business, my marriage. And the devil is roaring around like a royal lion looking for him to devour. You are supposed to be an ego that is seen far. Having vision. So worrying, ruling over territories, watching over your territory like a watchman, doing like a chicken, doing, covering, covering, and your enemy is looking for you. How long will you continue to defend? Go and ask Nigeria team that play the AFCON, they will tell you. All the seven matches or six matches they played, they were defending. And in the final, they became so tired that the Ivory Coast team defeated them. Because you cannot continue defending. You have to attack. One thing the commentator kept on saying, he said, Nigeria have been absorbing pressure. He said, how much, how long will they absorb this pressure? You have been absorbing pressure. Where you are supposed to attack? Where you are supposed to unleash? Oh God, open their eyes that they may see. Absorbing pressure. Oh, witchcraft here. Yeah, this on that, this on that. How long will you continue to absorb pressure? Attack. God knew that the fall of Adam was the kingdom the government of heaven left it. And another kingdom invaded the earth. The devil did not take permission. Immediately Adam fell. The Holy Spirit left. And demons, the devil and his host invaded the earth. And a new government came. A colony government. A colonial government. That was what happened. This is a battle between kingdom and kingdom. What you see will determine how your destiny will be. If the enemy want to seize you, they will stop you from seeing. This is about kingdom and kingdom fighting. Looking for territory. Looking for ground. God does not want us to leave this earth. God wants us to be in authorities in this earth. When Jesus was praying for his disciples in the book of John 18, he said, Father, I'm not praying that you should take them out of here. He said, no, he didn't die to take you out of here. You must have invasion mentality invasion possession mentality the bible said in the book of obediah 1 17 it said upon Mount zion there shall be deliverance there shall be holiness and the children of jacob will possess their possession upon Mount zion in the church that's Mount zion there will be deliverance yes there will be holiness yes but possess possessions. And in verse 21, it says, Saviors we arise from Zion. Saviors, saviors. Saviors are people with a messianic mentality, with a warrior mentality, heroic mentality. That is saviors. Meaning they know that problem is there. But God has called me. That's why I'm here. To stop. Look at that. That, that, that people are beginning to be ordained. They are, be, they are beginning to receive the ordination. Saviors must arise in every nation, in every territory. God forbid that city of truth will be small. 
as far as I'm here, we, we, any stadium, any political party can feed it. We will fill that stadium times five. You are not understanding. You don't know why we are here. Are you, are you hearing me? You don't know why we are here. Why some that are not seen are still saying, who is this prophet David that just came from nowhere? I don't even know what they are saying. The last thing I heard was that God is saying, the church, the church, my church shall not be small because I am the God of hosts. In the multitude of people is the king's honor. So a, a worldly artist should not come here and fill the FMB stadium. A political party should not be doing their political gathering and fill a stadium. And the church is in a small building. God forbid. God for not in our days, not in our time. I am speaking upon you. The Bible says one shall chase a thousand and two ten thousand. We shall possess nations. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Are you hearing me? Say, I came with an invasion mentality. Yes. We didn't came to settle. We came to dominate. I was not disobedient to the divine, to the heavenly vision. One thing that happened here, yeah, there's no vision, is scattering. You begin to lose things. You begin to lose people. Lose money. A business that lack vision will scatter. An organization that lack vision will scatter. In Acts of the Apostle 8, from verse 1, God saw that these people were lacking vision. 1, Act 8, 1. Now Saul was consenting to his death. And at that time, a great persecution arose against the church, which is at Jerusalem, because they gathered in one place. So God sent persecution to scatter them. That was not the plan of God, that they should remain one place. And just be scared, eating bread together and eating food. That was not the plan. When the Holy Spirit gave, was given to them in Acts 1, He said, you shall be witness to me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. They were still in Jerusalem. Some of you don't know why affliction is coming to you and things are scattering around you. There's persecution. No vision. That is why God is trying to stir you up. He said, and they were all scattered throughout the region of Judea. That was the plan. And of Samaria. Act 1 from verse 8. You shall see power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witness to me in Jerusalem. You see that? That's the vision. The vision starts with Jerusalem. Then you must proceed to Judea, to Samaria, and to the end of the earth. So in Act 1, when they were not fulfilling this vision, Act 8 from verse 1, he said, now Saul was consenting to his death. At that time, a great person arose against the church which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the region of Judea, Samaria. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made a great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering every house and dragging off men and women, committing them to prison. Therefore, those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. It was the plan. They must scatter. Sometimes it's God is scattering you from people. He wants to expand you. There are some people that are the veil that are covering that vision. Some environment are the veil. So God will bring trouble to separate you. If some people are with you, you will not move forward. That's the truth. There have to be a scattering. Scattering. Scatter. And when that kind of time comes, when God wants you to scatter, if you like, be good. If you like, be nice. If you like, be gentle. If you like, do everything you can to keep that relationship. It must scatter. Now, see how the gospel is spreading. Verse 5. Then Philip went down to the city. And you know that Philip came as a result of the apostles discovering themselves. And they looked for deacons. St Philip was one of the deacons. Stephen that was martyred was one of the deacons they found. The first martyrs of the faith was discovered when the apostles found vision. Philip went into Samaria and preached Christ to them. And the multitude with one accord, he did this the word spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracle which he did. For unclean spirit crying out loud came out of men who were possessed and men who were paralyzed and lame were healed. See that 
and there was great joy in that city. When believers begin to spread, if we are not seeing joy in Johannesburg, if we are not seeing joy in Cape Town or in, in South Africa, the believers have not spread. That's why. We are the joy givers. We are joy emitters. We are joy producers. Any Christian that is depressed is an absence of vision. We are not sent to be depressed. We are sent to be joy givers. Givers of joy. When the church begin to possess the possession, gain the ground. First, you even bring joy to your family. If your family is still crying, it's because you have not possessed your family. Who is the witch that wants to speak? When I'm speaking in my family, they never burn them. No power can control my family. No devil can kill anyone in my family. I am there. I am there. I am in control. I didn't come to become the star of the family. I came to become a priest and a king. Are you hearing me, somebody? So when I'm talking, no witch can talk. That is what you should do. Gain possession over your family. Take over your city. Take over your territories. Are you hearing me, somebody? I am speaking upon your life today. You are rising with power. You are rising with dominion. You are rising with authority. If God gives you power, he gives you vision. Because power without vision is confusion. He gave them power. Then he said, you will be witness to me. Jerusalem, Samaria, Judah, to the other. So he's giving them the vision that your gospel does not have limitation. Go and take territories. That's what he's saying to them. To the uttermost part of the earth. So there should be no place who will walk into and say, this place is not for big Christians. No, that's not, that's not what we're sent. The, the assignment is take everywhere. Take everywhere. I'm showing you now from Daniel, the vision speaks about dispensation and empires. So the first was Nebuchadnezzar. Go back to Daniel 8 again. Let's continue that story. Daniel vision. So the first king there. Next verse, I think we are in verse 4 already. He said, and suddenly another beast, a second, like a bear. You see, all these kingdoms and territories, when he's saying the, another beast, it shows that what we are here to confront are beasts. You think it's small, small devils? Beasts! Even your family, they are beasts. In every city, there's a beast. Look at, just look at how they look. And suddenly, another beast a second like a bear. It was raised up on the side and had three ribs in his mouth between his teeth and they said thus to it, Arise, devour much flesh. This was the empire of Medes and Patience which was controlled by Dairos. So after the Babylonian empire, Medes controlled by Dairos. Another empire came again. After this I looked and there was another, another empire has come again. Like a leopard, which had on his back four wings of a bed. The beast also had four head, and dominion was given to it. This is talking about Greece, the empire of Greece, and it was Alexander the Great. After this, I saw in the ninth vision again, behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and horrible, exceedingly strong. It had huge iron teeth. It was devouring, breaking in pieces, and trampling the rest of it with his feet. And it was different from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns. Now this one is Nero. Roman Empire is the fourth empire. And Nero was the king then. Have you heard of Emperor Nero? Now look at the plan. When Nero became a king, the Roman Empire, which is the strongest empire, Nero was so wicked that his first wife, he handcuffed her and killed her on the bat in his, in his house. His second wife, he kicked her when she was pregnant she was, and she died. Emperor Nero came against the church in those days. He was the one that killed Peter and Because according to the prophecy, if you go down in this prophecy, 
a certain season was given to him to persecute the saints. That's what the Bible said. So he was killing them. Some of them, they were disembodied. How? He looked for four wide horses. Tie your hand to this one. Tie your other hand to this one. Tie one leg to this. Tie. So the four of them will move with force and the person will tear into pieces. Some of the Christians then were thrown into a theater where they will bring a lion, hungry lion, and they will wear you animal skin with blood so that once the lion sees you, he will be so angry and he will, he will come after you. That was how he was killing Christians. So Paul was beheaded that same season when Nero was leading. Peter was killed in Rome also. So there was a lot of martyrs like never before. You won't like to hear the other way they kill people. In those days, you see your candle, candle light. Now I see this candle. Now I see this candle. Do we have any light here? This thing is light. Now see what Nero did. You see this wick. This is the candle wick. This is where you put the fire, isn't it? He looked for flammable wax and tie and put on humans like this. So the human being became this. You don't know what happened to Christianity. Say, I'm a Christian. Imagine it's a human being that is this. They will put fire like this at night. This thing that is burning now is a human being. A human leg. It starts from the leg. They call it human torchlight. And they will be crying. Very slow and painful death. So this week, human beings became, the, the believers those days, they became a weak. Weak. That's the fourth beast we are talking about. They have the heart of a beast. And they focus on Christianity then. So this faith that comes to you, you say, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, and you're asking for breakthrough. They were people that were born like this. They were wax. They, they, they waxed them. They became flammable. And it was burning them from their feet. So they are crying. It does not care. At night. In fact, the whole of Rome those days, this thing you call street light, it was human being that was burning like this then. Human being were street lights. And they were burning out, they were roasting. And those days, even believers then, they prefer to be martyred than to die no, normal death. They were ready. Because they told them, they were assuming that once you die normal death, you, before you resurrect is when Jesus comes. But once you are martyred, you go straight to heaven. So they were eager to be martyred. All right. May God save our generation. Not, not, this, not this generation that say, I don't have money for transfer to go to church. I don't have clothes. God, you didn't give me my breakthrough. God, if you don't give me a child. There were people that became wax for the gospel to get to you. Today, you have small money in your pocket. Say, I will not pay my tithe. No, my, my, the, the, the church are looking for my money. You are joking. Peter said, your money perish with you. You know, Peter was... Wanted to be, they wanted to crucify him because crucifixion was another pattern of death those days. So he said, no. He chose. He said, he cannot dishonor his master. So they should hang him upside down. So he was hanged upside down. Paul, because he was a Roman citizen, he said, he, don't, he, he, he has right to choose the kind of death he would die. He said, they should cut his head. They don't want to go through any pain. <laughs> they don't want to go through any painful for one. So, just God does it, God of his head. Now, after Nero, there was another emperor again, continued what Nero was doing. Then after that empire, the more they are killing the Christians, the more they were increasing. After that empire, then Constantine came. Now, before Constantine went for war, he discovered that the Christians are increasing. So instead of, you know, politic, he used his political mind. He said, instead of me to fight these people, let me be with them. So he supported Christianity then. Before he went for war, according to what he said, he saw a cross on the sky. And on the cross, they wrote under it, beneath it, that you will conquer. So he told all his soldiers, on their sheet, they should put the cross and they won the fight. So Christianity had peace in its time. And many people don't know how Roman Catholic came. 
That's that Roman Catholic. Now, after, after him, another person came again. Even he allowed baptism, he allowed everything. Christianity began to spread. After him, Theodilus came also and did the same thing. And Christianity was the only religion allowed in the whole of Rome. So, under 300 years, Everybody must serve God. That's how Christianity spread. That's where the Roman Catholic came from. Roman Catholic. That's why the Pope will always come from there. A certain time came, a Pope was, became an uh, emperor. So the plan and the prophecy of the church is at the end, we should be in government. That's what, I'm telling, that's what I'm taking you to. Are you seeing it? Okay, let's read Daniel 8 again. Daniel 7, 8. As I was constraining the horns, and there was under horn, a little one coming up from before whom I washed till, he's talking about after Nero, I washed till thrones were put in place. And the ancient of this was seated. His garment was as white as snow. And the air of his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fairy flame. His wheel a burning fire. A fairy stream issued, came forth from before him. A thousand and thousand ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated and books were open. I watched then because of the sound of the pompous word which the horn was speaking. And I watched till the beast was slain. And his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. As for the rest of the beast, they had... They had their dominion taken away. Yet their, their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. Meaning the beasts, they are still around, but their dominion will be taken. Because now the ancient of this, talking about Christ, and the government of the Holy Spirit. Are you seeing that? Are you understanding these visions? 13. I watched in the ninth vision, he kept on watching and behold, one like the Son of Man, coming with clouds of heaven, he came to the ancient of days, and they brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory and the kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion. Not like the Greeks, not like the Romans. Not like Babylon. Not like the Pasha and Medes. He's talking about you and I. His dominion is an everlasting dominion. We shall not pass away. And his kingdom, the one we shall not be destroyed. That was what Isaiah the prophet said in Isaiah 9 from verse 6. For unto us a child is born. And unto us the government will be given. He said, okay. And unto, he said, unto us a child is born. We shouldn't behave like children. He said, and his name shall become wonderful, counselor, everlasting father, prince of peace, seven. He said, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. So the prophecy, the plan, that was why Jesus came during the Roman Empire. When they were still ruling, that's when he came. Because after the Roman Empire, the next kingdom is the kingdom of God that should invade and rule the earth. And God wanted to use the strategy of the Roman Empire that that's how the church should behave. That's why, in, that's why he's a Roman Catholic. Roman Catholic God, their inspiration, having many Catholic churches in the same place, doing the same thing from the Roman Empire. Because the Roman Empire could send a government to, to, to Nigeria, another government to US, another government to, keep to, to Canada. All of them are doing the same thing that Rome is doing. That's why that's where the, the added take over territories. You are clapping mosquito club now. Because you are, you are, you are expecting to hear 
I receive my breakthrough. I receive my breakthrough. I receive my miyako. Miyako. <laughs> you were sent to take cities. To take nations. This our faith is a faith of vision. The reason why many people are not taking cities, they are not thinking about territories, is because no vision. See what no vision can do. In Genesis 15, from verse 1, the Lord appeared to Abraham in a vision. 15, 1, who is at that table there? That person doesn't have a vision. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. It's in a world. Tell anybody where there's no vision. There will be confusion. Tell anybody where there's no vision. There will be stagnation. You know what the enemy does that with us? You see, he shows you when you have not seen anything yet, you've not seen a child. Let me use a child's mind for you. A little child, that little children you give birth to, those toddlers in your house, roaming around, their mind is still in liquid state. You know liquid? Water. Water have what liquid state? That children you have seen there, some of them say their mind is still in gaseous state. So if they see something here, they have forgotten. They see this one, they have forgotten. They see this one. But the more they are growing, the mind will move from being gaseous, which means it can easily forget things. That's why you can beat a baby. And in a few minutes later, that baby will come back to you and say, Uncle, she dash. It's, it's a child. It's evaporated. That's the gaseous state. Then the child begins to grow. Its mind now forms liquid. So it begins to retain things gradually. But you can still change it when it's still in the liquid state. If a child now grows in a certain environment and becomes an adult, to move from liquid to ice, solid state, that is what we call mindset. It has set. You can't change it again. The molecules are joined to each other. What is affecting many people? Do you read your Bible and say, if our gospel is veiled, it's veiled for those whom the gods of this world has blindfolded their mind. So they, he has set their mind. He has turned their mind to ice block and tell them there's nothing like God. No Christ. Let's leave that thing. Leave all these things. These people are fooling themselves. Anytime you see people fighting Christianity, fighting men of God, they are being veiled. Some people will see you going to church and they'll say you are confused. Their mind is veiled. You don't know. You don't know what vision does. Once the light, you know sun, sunlight. When sun come on ice, the ice will melt. So you before, you were eliminated from God. Your mind was set on evil. Then one day, a vision came to you. Whom? That was what was happening to Paul. That was what was happening to Paul. In Act 9. He was going, Act 9 from verse 1. He was going to kill. His mind was set against Christ. While he was going, the Bible says, he saw a vision, a light shone on him. That light melted his mindset and gave him another vision right there. As he journeyed, Acts 9 from verse 3, as he journeyed, put that scripture there, he came near Damascus and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. That is what is called heavenly vision. Then he fell on the ground and had a voice saying to him, Saul, so, Saul, so, why are you persecuting me? He's melting that mindset. He said, and he said, who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the gods. So he trembling and as he said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Mind is changing, renewing. Then, he, then the Lord said to him, arise, go into the city and you will be told what you must do. That is what vision does. Vision tells you what to do. Are you hearing me? Yes, you can grow up in a very poor family, poor environment, poor nation. But once God's vision comes to you, it gives you an idea that will bring you out of that family oppression. You are receiving a vision. That's what vision does. You see, the, 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 the best way the enemy can attack is to take vision away from you. For you not to be able to see. Vision break limitation mindsets. When there's a limitation, look for vision. Where there's stagnation, look for vision. Where there's oppression, look for vision. 
Vision will bring you out of every prison, every limitation, every frustration. See Genesis 15 from verse 1. A frustrated old man, Abraham. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid. I am your exceedingly, I am your sheed, and your exceedingly great reward. But Abraham said to the Lord, What will you give me? Seeing I go childless. That is the mindset. See that? And the heir of my house is Eliza of Damascus. Then Abraham said, Lord, look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This one shall not be your heir, but one who will come out from your own body shall be your heir. And he brought him outside and said, Look toward the heavens, heavenly vision. Count the stars if you can be able to number them. And he said to him, so shall your descendant be. From small-mindedness. From I will not have a child. To telling him that your child will be numberless. So vision break limitation mindset. If you are frustrated, limited, it is the absence of vision. That's why you will pray. Oh Lord, give me a vision. God is giving you a vision this season. He said, so shall your descendant be. He didn't left him there. He continued again. Six. Okay. And Abraham believed the Lord and it was accounted for him for righteousness. Meaning, he started seeing differently. He started thinking differently. From that day, he started talking differently. Because I have seen a vision. I will be father of nation. I am not in confusion over my situation. So when Abraham returned to his house that night, once he closed his eyes, he still stars, stars. Many, many stars. And he's seeing people's face. He saw Jacob's face. He saw Isaac's face. He saw Joseph's face. He saw Jesus. He saw David. He saw many of the, all the Israelites. They were looking at him. And they were calling him, Daddy, Daddy, Father, Father, Father. And he opened his eyes. He said, Wow, I am the Father of nations. May God change your mind through his visions. In the name of Jesus. Everything changed. When you read your Bible very well, you discover that Abraham, God showed him stars. Joseph, God showed him 12 stars, 11 stars, bow to him. We are redeemed as stars. Every believer, you have been redeemed in what? Star. So those are the stars Abraham was seeing. It's the same star Joseph saw in his dream that his brothers were the 11 stars and they bowed to him. You can't get to a destination. You had a vision is not given to you. For you to get to your destination, the destination of your destiny, you need a vision. For you to, to get to your full capacity, you need a vision. So you pray, oh Lord, give me a vision. I need a vision. Our God is a God of what? When God even wanted to invade, to show that he wants to break the church from the limitation of Jerusalem, Samaria, Judea. He wanted to enter into the Gentiles nation. He appeared to a Gentiles man. In Acts of the Apostle 10, from verse 1, he appeared to Cornelius. He said, Cornelius, Acts 10, 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what is called the Italian Regiment, a devout man, one who feared God with all his household, who gave aims generously to the people and prayed to God always. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius. And he said, when you observe him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? So he said to him, your aims and prayer, your prayers and arms have come as a memorial before God. Somebody may God talk this about you today. Amen. Now send men to Joppa and send for Simon, whose son name is Peter. Verse 9. While Peter was still in his own house, another vision also came to him. The next day, as they went on their journey and drew near the city, Peter went up on the house top to pray about the sixth hour. Then he, he became very hungry and wanted to eat. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven opened. And an object like a great sheet up, burned at the, floor, the four corners, descending to him and led down to the earth. 
In it were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth, white beasts, creeping things, and bears of the air. And a voice came to Peter, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. And because of Peter's low mentality, he said, But Peter said, No, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean. Tradition was holding his mind. Mm -hmm. And a voice spoke to him again the second time, What God has cleansed, you must not call common. This was done three times and the object was taken up into heaven. Why, now, why Peter was wondering within himself what this vision which he had seen meant. Behold, the men who had been sent from Cornelius had made inquiry of Simon's house and stood before the gates. And they called and asked whether Simon, whose son he was Peter, was lodging there. Why Peter thought about the vision. Thought about the what? Thought about the what? The spirit said to him, Behold, three men are seeking you. Arise, therefore, go down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Vision dissolved doubt. Are you hearing me? Yes. If you want to break tradition, pattern, pray for vision. Say, my father was poor, my mother was poor, my uncle was sick, my family doesn't grow like this. You need a vision. Because vision makes you to see what they didn't see. Do you understand that? Yes. You see what they didn't see. And when you see what others don't see, you will do what they could not do. Yes. Or a Robert wrote a book. He said, when you see the invisible, you will do the impossible. You are not doing anything because you have not seen anything. Do you know if a demon wants to attack you, if Satan wants to attack you, he also gives upon you just begin to attract it you know magnet your mindset is a magnet it attracts what it is set about do you understand that yes. for no reason people just come to you that will fulfill those mindsets so you discover that somebody that grew up from a place where he was abused the mind is set over abuse always attract That you were abused, you were bullied. You, must, you attract a bishop, a prophet that is abusive as a husband. And you'll be beating you. And you say, Are you not a pastor? Are you not a man of God? Are you not? He say, That one is your own cup of tea. I've removed my collar, I've removed my authority, I've removed my anointing. In fact, I'm the son of the devil at home. He, he, he. <laughs> Because that's what the mind is set about. So before you do anything, reconstruct the mindset. Make sure you have a vision from God before you take any action. You don't attract what you want. You attract what your mind is set about. Abraham was attracting childlessness because his mind was set that his servant Eliza will take over his property. God said, no, change that mindset. So vision comes to melt ancient mindset, ancient tradition. That's what vision does. May you receive a vision from God. I say, may you receive a vision from God. Receive a vision from God. A vision from God. Over your family. Over your territory. Over your city. Over your business, Amen. over your government. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. say, I receive a vision. Amen. That's one prayer you pray this season. Oh Lord, give me a vision. Heavenly vision. Not just a vision you've gone create yourself. With. Pray for divine vision. Like Paul. See that Acts 26, 19. Therefore, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, mm -hmm. but declared first to those in Damascus and in Jerusalem and throughout all the region of Judea and to the Gentiles, that they should repent, turn to God, and do works befitting repentance. 
For this reason they seized me. The Jews seized me in the temple and tried to kill me. Therefore, having obtained help from God to this day, I stand witnessing both the small and great, saying no other things than those which the prophet and Moses would come. That the Christ will suffer, that he will be the first to rise from the dead, I will proclaim light to the Jewish people and to the Gentiles. Now, as he thus made his defense, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, you are beside yourself. Much learning is driving you mad. Vision make you act like a madman. You don't behave like the ordinary man when you have vision. Have you seen a depressed madman once? Or a frustrated madman? No, mad people are always happy. Because they are seeing what you are not seeing. According to the madman, if you see a big house, he said, that is my house. That is my car. All things are mine. And when you see them walking on the road, you just say, smile like. Have you not gone to a psychiatric hospital before? There's no depressed person in psychiatry. All of them are laughing. At you. <laughs> <laughs> They are happy. Is it that it's sad? If you want to groove, you want to enjoy yourself, stop paying money for comedy. Go to psychiatric. Yeah, go to psychiatric. Just see them. When you say madman, run from that place. Use their to knock the wall. Beam. Are you hearing me? See one remove his eyes. He used to play ball and put it back again. <laughs> You don't know how to enjoy yourself. Go to psychiatric house, you see. Are you hearing me? Yes. You just see one dancing and say, everywhere, music. And there's no music anywhere. Vision make you behave like a madman. You see what others don't see. You do what others can't do. You believe what others can't believe. You take risks that others are not even willing to take. You talk what others are scared of saying. You put your money in where others are scared of putting money and you get results. You desire what others can't even think of. They will be asking the question, how did your mind go far like this? Say, oh Lord, oh Lord. Give, me a give me a heavenly vision. Are you ready to pray that prayer? Yes, I grew up with so much limitation until God started showing me heavenly visions. May you begin to receive heavenly visions. Amen. Heavenly vision that will bring you out of fear, Amen. doubt, unbelief. Amen. May you receive such visions. Amen. Oh Lord, oh Lord. Show, me mercy. show me mercy. Give me a heavenly vision. Me a heavenly vision. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. Ask for a vision. Some trust in chariots. Some trust in horses. But we trust in the name of the Lord. Some trust in their skills. Other trust in their strength. But we trust in the name of the Lord. When the hands of flesh refill them, we will still be standing tall. Cause we trust in the name of the Lord. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. We triumph in the name of the Lord. Nagazuchia Nabaka Nabaka Yabo Dagazuchia Yabo Dagazuchia Yabo Dagazuchia
need a vision. Heavenly vision. Not my own vision. Your vision, oh Lord. Your vision. Pray for vision, pray for vision. vision. When Peter was on the prayer altar, he got a vision of the, from heaven. Oh, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. Lord, I need a vision. A heavenly vision. for a vision. Jesus name the best thing that can ever happen to you and bring change for you this year is to have a heavenly vision I know what I'm saying if you don't there can't be any change in anyone's life without a vision a certain time came I was in ministry and some people were misbehaving they were the workers then and the Lord said to me don't bother yourself about men concentrate on the vision he said men can change but vision does not change men can come and go but don't allow your vision to go you are looking for men when you are supposed to be looking for vision when Judas died committed suicide the vision was that it must be 12 apostles that will rule, that will sit. There's a position prepared for the 12. There's a vision. So they replaced him. Because men can change, but God's vision, heavenly vision, doesn't change. Instead of chasing things around, chasing people around, chase vision. Chase for heavenly vision. I was satisfied with that word from the Lord. It gave me focus intensity, concentration. It's not of you to be frustrated with what men are doing. Concentrate on what the vision is saying. And that was the leap yet. We, the church took a leap. He made, like, made that statement February last year. Some were offended. He made, like, made the statement. Some left. 
Some gathered together, I was making conversation. They thought the word was from me. It was not from me. It brought huge open doors into our ministry. Because God said, God bless you, those at our side. May you experience that kind of open door. <laughs> February last year. February. It was the same day I remember that day. Like no man business. It was the same day I was putting on the same flower shirt where I said, AKA we die. It was the same day. I remember that day like no man's business. And he didn't, three weeks later, he died. It's the same day I made that statement. It's the same day some people left this ministry. The same day. Because I got an heavenly vision. God said, don't stress yourself about men. Men change. Vision doesn't change. From that day, I love everyone, love the disciples, love everyone that is working here, but I don't attach myself to you. I attach myself to God's vision. You can decide to wake up tomorrow and say, I'm going to U.S. And say, ah, will I now be begging you? Say, please don't go to U.S. now. Or I will now say, hey, I'm finished. No. People can wake up and decide to say, I'm going. Men goes, vision stays. I'm just giving you an example. Not just, I, I'm teaching you my life. What I've seen. Vision. I want that vision of prince. If you don't have vision, somebody can wake up in a dream and say, I saw you died. I saw you lost your money. You lose your house. You then you start holding on to that. It will happen to you. But when you hear such things, ask heaven for a vision. So that you will see something that's not what people are dreaming about you. Sometimes people didn't have any dream. They, they are just telling you. So they are just telling you that bad thing so that you will be meditating on it. And when you meditate on it, it will happen to you. They will not say, didn't we dream about it? Didn't we tell you? Because now you lack vision. You add on to their false vision. You will know why the prophet Habakkuk in Habakkuk 2 from verse 1 he said, I will stand upon my watch and I will hear what God will say to me. And God came down and said, write the vision and make it plain upon the table that he may run that readeth it. He said, do it, tarry, wait for it. He said, it must, he said, it must happen. For the vision itself and appointed them, but at the end it will speak. It will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it. Another thing that doesn't lie after God is vision. The Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. Vision does not lie. Men can lie. Heaven's vision does not lie. Every day is my prayer. Lord, believe me, I'm pray I pray that prayer every day. A vision, Lord. A heavenly vision. Lord, give me a heavenly vision. And if you even want men to come into your life, if God give you heavenly vision, He give you heavenly men that will take the vision to the place. Not the one that will follow you because you are a gentleman, you smile a lot, you are tall, you are handsome, you have money. That's not why they will follow you. They will follow you because God sent them to you. Vision brings God sent people into your life. When is heavenly vision? Heavenly vision. Heavenly vision. They are with you till you die. They are the ones that when everybody are saying everything wrong about you or say they want to leave you, they will say, to whom shall we go? You have the word of truth. They will steal with you. You can't die for your faith if you don't have a vision about the faith. You can't die for God if you don't have heavenly vision. I move every day. I wake up every day. I sleep every day thinking about my heavenly vision from God. That is what consumes me. I'm more busy here than I'm more busy doing things. I'm telling I'm more busy here. Sometimes 
I haven't spoken to my parents for three months. My brothers, everybody about, in my mind, I'm busy. But I'm not seeing myself running, I'm not busy roaming around. I'm either busy, yeah, yeah, studying, busy about the vision. So after later, not, ah, I said I would call, I didn't call. I said I would call, I didn't call. I said I would call, I didn't call. That's what vision, vision consumes you, it eats you. God's heaven vision, it consumes you. When you say, I don't have passion to go to church, you don't have vision yet. Heavenly vision comes you. The first heavenly vision God gave to me was the vision to be an usher, altar boy. And that vision consumed me. I don't want anybody to stand in my position. So I was always there, back to back. I even said I don't want to go to school anymore. Let me concentrate on being an usher. You've not gotten a vision from God. <laughs> so for the sake of being an usher, the university I went to, it was an online university. That is the first online university in Nigeria. I have to go to online just so that I will not miss my position of serving as an usher. Not that I knew I was going to be a prophet. No. My vision as an usher gave me my first passport. Made me to first trip we wanted to go. It was Germany, Spain and Italy. As an usher, I was going to do usher there. It's usher that brought me here. Vision. That's what I'm talking about. I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. That's it. That's what brought me here. And that's what the city came me. Oh, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. Some of us, God gave us small vision today as usher, as, some, as cleaner. You are playing with it. You don't know that the big vision is inside the small vision. Do you, I said this, the what? The big vision is inside the small vision. Me serving as an usher, the big vision to be a prophet of nations was inside Austrian. God did not tell me you will be a prophet. He said, go and work as an usher, as an altar boy. Go and follow him. That's what he said to me. He didn't say you will be a prophet one day. And while I was serving as an usher, I, oh my God, you don't, nobody work as an usher more than me. I became the best, we were the best, me and Andy were the best ushers. When we came to um, Bushiri then 2015 two of us usher with Prophet Jeremiah we touched everybody then in ECG only two of us that's how passionate we were we came to ECG we were jumping on chairs back 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 to old people they were, their ushers were looking at us like that because they were burger they were burger ushers burger McDonald ushers which kind of people had this one We're jumping on chairs to, to old people. I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. Which vision are you playing with now and thinking a big one will come? <laughs> you are joking. If I disobey being an usher, I will never be a prophet. First of all, we have to now go back to start asking you, which vision have you ignored? Which vision did God give to you that looked too small? I don't know what is passport. The first time I ever enter a plane in my life is to be an usher, to go and do usher. You are not hearing me. Ushering. There was a young man that was consistent in taking photos like that man there. Yes, there was a guy. He was just taking pictures like this. He just posted his picture one day online. And they called him that the governor of the country is looking for him, that I want him to be his personal photographer. Wow. Anywhere the governor was going, that guy was always doing photography. He was not in the government. God can give you a small vision. It will take you to the government. Yeah. That is the government I was telling you about. It's an heavenly vision that puts you in the government. Many people have become honorary tailors, sewing clothes, just because they made a very good design and gave to 
a politician, and the politician wore it. I said, ah, you will be my designer from today. The president see, saw it and said, who did this for you? And he brought the person in. When I was an usher, I fasted more than pastors. That was big church. That's how, that's how I value ushering. Oh God, you don't understand. I saw God used to being another that because I was following the prophet. So even on the road, if I'm walking on the street, I'm just learning the walk. Say, okay, when it goes like this, we'll go like we we'll like, we'll avoid the camera like this. Mad. Vision makes you mad. Vision separates you. I knew that time it was not time for me to have girlfriend or relationship. So there was no girlfriend in my life, no relationship. I cut every woman off. They were looking for me. As I know, I'm telling you. As I know, they're looking for me. Vision that does not keep you disciplined is not from God. Yeah. If I was doing girlfriend, then boyfriend, girlfriend, I wouldn't have been here. May God give you a vision. So it made me grow up. When I knew my vision, so I was seeing vision. I was avoiding where youth gather. I, I, so I, knew, I, I was thinking that youth don't think. The only thing they think is girlfriend and boyfriend. Youth don't think. So I, I was going to Mountain of Fire and there was no youth in Mountain of Fire. You hardly find youth in the Mountain of Fire I went. Because Mountain of Fire, they're always serious with life. It's people that are serious with life that are there. They're shouting, die, 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 die. So... <laughs> They are fighting witches. So that was where I was. I, I, I was the youngest there first. It's even me, youth, started seeing and started saying, ah, if this young man can become here, we'll go. I went to where mature people were dealing with life. That's why you see you people now. Mature people are here. Families are here. I started looking for family since. Even though it's youth that that food is ministry. We will do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is a season. We are youth. Yeah. <laughs> what my mind set on going around matured people. That's why reasonable people like you are here today. Matured people like you. So if any youth see me, they, they begin to take life serious. That's what I was saying to do. To make youth know that you are not a baby. Youth, youthfulness is not childishness. It's not girlfriend and boyfriend. Rem. One thing I used to pray when I was going to Babalola's mountain is what is happening. I say, oh Lord, use me when I'm young so that I'll be an example to the youth. That was what I was always praying when I was going to Babalola. And I was the youngest those days going to Babalola's mountain. And I was an usher heavenly vision. I don't know where you kept the one God gave you. You wrote it. Now you have forgotten it. Go back to it. God does not speak when you have already spoken. You didn't hear what I said? I said God does not what? When he has already go and attend to the first one he told you. I'm praying for you. The Bible said in the book of Jeremiah 33 and the word of the Lord came again. Meaning God spoke before and he came to remind him. Make the word of God come to you again. Amen. May the vision of the Lord come to you again. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Are you blessed? Yes. Now you want me to take that prayer again. Say, oh Lord. Oh Lord. In your mercy. In your mercy. Give me a heavenly vision. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Lord, give me a heavenly vision. 